Hi, my name is Helena Sheehan and I am vodcasting for Biolog.ie and in this vodcast I am going to take a look at a dye hybrid cross. So genetic crosses, a dye hybrid genetic cross. So let's just say that in humans brown eyes are dominant to blue eyes and tall height is dominant to short height. And we're going to cross a male who is heterozygous for both traits with a female who is blue eyed and short. So this is a dye hybrid cross. Di means two, and the reason that it's a dye hybrid cross is because we're looking at eye color and we're looking at height. So there's two traits here that are in question. So we're going to cross a male who is heterozygous for both traits. So put our parents in here. And I'm going to draw the chromosomes again in this one. So he's heterozygous for both traits, and we might actually jot in here the genes are not linked. Okay, so he is heterozygous for eye colour. And I better also jot down, always at the top of the page, write down your letters. So big B is dominant over small b. So big B is brown because that's dominant. And small b is blue because that's recessive. And then height, we're going to give a big T to tall because that's dominant. And a small t to short because that's recessive. So they're the letters that we're going to use for this cross. So this male is heterozygous for both traits. That means different. Hetero, different. So that means he would have a big B and a small b. He is carrying the gene for brown eyes and the gene for blue eyes. And he's also heterozygous for height for both traits. So he's carrying the gene for tall and the gene for short. So that's our male. Our female, it says, is blue eyed and short. Now in order for her to have blue eyes when we look at her, she must be homozygous, two small b's. Okay? Now homozygous, if it's mentioned in the question, they don't often mention it in the question because they want you to be able to figure out that if she has blue eyes, she must be homozygous. She must have two small b's because if there was a big b there, she would have brown eyes. So if she's blue eyed, she has to be homozygous. And homozygous means the same. And she's also homozygous for height. So two small t's. Okay? Now, as I mentioned in the last vodcast, which detailed a monohybrid cross, and you can see it on biolog.ie. There is an important thing to remember when we are doing the gametes. Gametes always have half the number of chromosomes as the parent cell. So in these particular cells there are four chromosomes therefore the gametes will have two. So this male he's going to half the number of chromosomes in his sperm cells we need to take every possible combination here. So maybe he will create a sperm cell with a brown eyed gene and tall. So big B and big T. Maybe he will produce a sperm cell with the brown eyed gene and short. So big B and small t. Maybe he will produce a sperm cell with the blue-eyed gene and tall. We're basically taking every possible combination. So we've taken the first one here and put it with each of these. Now we're going to take the first one here and put it with each of them again. So we're going to take small b and big T. And then we're going to take small b and small t. and we're going to cross this with a female. Now the female is homozygous so there aren't a lot of possibilities here because we only have small b's and small t's therefore she is only going to produce egg cells with regard to height and eye colour with the blue eyed gene small b and short 
small t. So they are the gametes. Remember, they have half the number of chromosomes as the original cell. Now we're going to do the first generation, F1, and they'll have the full set of chromosomes again because when a sperm cell and an egg cell combine, we end up with the first generation having the full set of chromosomes again. So we're going to cross this one with this one. We're going to put them all together again. We'll have four chromosomes again. Big B, small b here, and big T, small t. So we've done the first one there with that egg cell. We're going to do the second one here with this egg cell. So we're going to have big B, small b, small t, small t. Now we're going to take the third one, combine it with the egg cell, small b, small b, big T, small t. And we're going to take the last one, two small b's and two small t's. Now you can do this another way. You can do it with Punnett square. Sometimes in the Leaving Cert exam they will ask you to show the Punnett square. And sometimes the question is so complicated that you really do need to do the Punnett square. So if there were more possibilities of egg cells here you would do the Punnett square. I'm going to do one here anyway. So we're going to do each of these sperm cells across the top. Big, t big B, big T, big B, small t. Small B, big T, small b, small t. And then we're going to take the egg cell, small b, small t, and put it here. So what you do is, you put all the gametes from one individual across the top, and all the gametes from the other individual, as many as you need to, down the side. And then you create a grid, like this. Okay. So effectively, like if you look at what we did up here when we drew the chromosomes, we took the first sperm cell here and put it with the egg cell. So this is the first sperm cell and we put it with the egg cell. You just put into the box, you go up to here and across to there and put them in the box. Big B, small b, big T, small t. Here, big B, small b, small t, small t. Here, two small b's, a big T and a small t. And here, two small b's and two small t's. And as you can see, that is the same as that. That is the same as that. That is the same as that. And that is the same as that. So the answer is the same either way. These are our genotypes. Okay, so those answers in there, they are our genotypes. And we need to do the phenotypes. The phenotypes, what do we physically see when we look at this individual? Well, we did know that big B was brown. I'll just jot it down here again. Small b was blue. Big T was tall. And small t was short. So what we've got here, big B, small b. Brown is dominant. So this is brown-eyed and tall. Brown because there's a big B. There's no big T in there, so it can't be tall. It has to be short. Here we have blue and tall, and here we have blue and short. Okay, so the ratio here is 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1. That's the ratio. And if you're asked, for example, what is the percentage chance of these two individuals producing a child who has brown eyes and is short. So there's only one of them there. So one out of the four. One out of four. So there's a 25% chance of the child be having brown hair and short height. And that's a dihybrid cross. The genes are not linked. Not linked. I'm going to, yeah, another question that comes up quite frequently. <coughs> What is the significance of the fact that the genes are not linked? Now I'd have to do a linked cross to show you exactly. But basically, there is more variation in the offspring.
That is the answer there. And when I'm doing the linked cross, I'll explain to you where we got that answer from exactly. Okay, so that is a dihybrid cross for leaving cert biology. And genetic crosses are very common on the leaving cert biology exam paper. So if you know them, it's good because there are marks in it for you.